Hi guys, good evening, good evening. It's Fertility Solutions, um, Fertility Talk Live. And um, this evening, I just thought I'd, I'd jump on like a minute before 8 o'clock. Um, guys, tonight, um, hi, Dr. Hanukkah Mazzieri. I just want to let everyone know, just in case my lights go off and everything, it is load shooting. we bound to go off at 8 o'clock tonight. But I do have backup, so that's fine. Um, we've got a very interesting topic tonight with Dr. Hanukkah. I'm just going to accept him quickly. Go look. And there we go. Just waiting for him to join. Hit him. Okay. Just going to wait for him to go on. So I'll just wait. There we go. So it goes on. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to wait for Dr. Hanukum to come on. And um, like I said, um, we are scheduled for load shedding. Um, so if everything just goes dark around me, please bear with me. Um, Dr. Hanukum, do you want to send me another request and see if I can get that again? Um, so put, there shouldn't be any issues with it. Um, but so for those who's just joined, we're talking to Dr. Gerard Hanukum. He's from the Vitas, um, Vitas Fertility Clinic. Um, that's in Cape Town. So yeah, Dr. Hanukum, just send me another request, please. And then um, otherwise I will just see if that works. Here we go. Hi, Dr. Hanukum. How are you? Hi, good evening. I'm fine. Can you hear me well? I can hear you perfectly. Thanks okay. for, for joining us this evening. I was just telling everyone, I hope you're not scheduled for load shedding. I'm connected. I'm sitting somewhere else. I'm sitting right in my in the corner in my lounge here. So I could connect to the USB and my, I have my light connected to that as well. Um, I think it's called some backup battery thing. No. So just in case it goes off at eight and it's common always never late, so <laughs> it's how it works. Oh I've um, had my I've had my load shedding, so I'll be fine. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay, so um I've had a lot of people inbox me about this topic as well. Um, because I think a lot of women has obviously gone gone through a round and they're feeling despondent. So this is quite an important topic. It's what well, does my chance increase when it comes to the second and third round of IVF? Guys, if you are going through this at the moment or you plan on going to the second or third round of IVF um, and you've got a question for Dr. Hanukum, please put it in the comment section. He's a fertility specialist at the Vitas Fertility Clinic. Um, and also, guys, remember, we, we save all these videos on YouTube. Um, so you can go to our channel on YouTube. I can watch all the videos on there. You can also go over to Instagram. Stay on the Instagram page, look at the videos, all the videos are there. Okay, I just had load shedding. Um, videos are there and then on Facebook as well. So Dr. Hanukum, do you mind please um, introducing yourself to everyone? Okay. Thanks, Leanne, and thank you for the invitation and thank you to everybody that's uh, tuning in or signing in to listen to this talk. And um, I hope I can give you some interesting information and put a few things into perspective and answer some of your questions. Um, like Leanne said, I'm a fertility specialist, um, one of the fertility specialists at Avitas Fertility Clinic. We're in Pinelands at the Vincent Pilotti Hospital in Cape Town. Um, and that's where we practice and do IVF as well as a lot of endometriosis surgery and uh, fertility work. So basically to start off with, I think one of the important concepts and messages that I would like to get across when we speak about a topic like this is that I think people must have a, a long-term vision um, when it comes to IVF. Unfortunately, oh. fertility um, and IVF is not a quick fix. Um, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. And I think most of the people that struggle with infertility know most of the people that have been successful with fertility treatments also know that it is unfortunately it's a it's a long road um, and you have to have uh, the support and uh, the long-term vision um, you know to to see it through and 
I would like to sort of share some of the, the statistics and some of the science behind it, you know, so that people um, can understand and maybe be better prepared when they are uh, entering an IVF cycle or fertility treatment um, to have this in mind and really be prepared for that because that's ultimately what is going to guarantee the success. And if you look at the at the statistics and, and, and the studies that I'll be discussing, um, it is evident, you know, that uh, that success comes from, from subsequent tries. Um, so that yeah. sometimes then um, leads to the question, does my chances then increase, um, you know, with multiple cycles? So if, yeah. you, if you look at the data with regards to multiple cycles, and first, and maybe that's one for, point that I need to make first is that when one is listening to clinics reporting their own statistics or reading studies, it's very important to compare um, the statistics that they are presenting uh, uh, apples with apples and be yeah. very careful with how you interpret these statistics. Um, st uh, statistics can be very easily manipulated um, and IVF statistics can be reported in many different ways. Um, they can be reported as pregnancy rates, um, either per cycle or per transfer, or they can be reported as live birth rates uh, per cycle per transfer. And even uh, with the same data set, you will get vastly different percentages um, by using different or comparing different things. So it's very important that when you are comparing clinics or when you are talking to your fertility specialist that you know exactly what statistic he, he is quoting for you. Um, so a, a per embryo transfer cycle rate will always be higher than a per cycle, trans, uh, per, per cycle uh, pregnancy rate. Um, and that's just because a lot of uh, women will not reach the point of, of embryo transfer. So once you've reached embryo transfer, automatically your, 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 your chances of having a pregnancy um, is going to be higher. Um, and so also your, your, your pregnancy rate will always be higher than your live birth rate because not all pregnancies eventually lead um, to a live birth. So ultimately, the best statistic um, to evaluate with is, is a live birth because that's ultimately what, what we want and what our patients want is a live baby. <clears throat> so if you are looking at, at IVF statistics Try and, and, and get live birth rates. Often people won't be quoting that in their statistics, unfortunately, because that is, 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 is not the nicest statistic because, um, you know, that's maybe not as successful as some other percentages will sound. So that's just a, a little bit of background. So if we <clears throat> look at overall um, statistics, um, and that's also another way of manipulating the statistics, is really sort of looking at a very small good prognosis group and reporting a very high statistic. In other words, your very young patients, less than 35 years old, will have a very high pregnancy rate uh, you know, per embryo transfer. That will be your best statistic. Whereas um, your older patient, um, you know, closer to 40, their live birth rate will be your worst statistic. And somewhere in between, you need to judge sort of what is the true success rate. So if we look at studies comparing sort of average success rates, um, uh, you will see that large studies, cohort studies, you know, with um, more than 150,000 women, 257,000 IVF cycles, will report an average um, live birth rate, you know, in an IVF cycle of around 25, 29% in your first cycle. So that is on average, bearing in mind that younger patients will have a lower, a higher uh, live birth rate, older patients a lower, but on average 29% for your first cycle. Your subsequent cycles then, uh, uh, your second, third and fourth, Per cycle rate, it does not improve, all right? So your subsequent cycles in, in, in these cohorts had a live birth rate of around about 20% for each subsequent cycle. So in short then, the, the, the chances of you to fall pregnant per cycle does not increase with the more cycles you do. Okay, all right, so your first cycle statistically will probably be your best cycle with the best per cycle success rate. Thereafter, your success rate falls a little bit and stays stable around 20% up until about nine cycles after which 
the the success rate uh, drops dramatically. So your per cycle success rate does not increase with subsequent cycles. The chances remain the same, right? But what if, what however does increase, and I think that's an important concept and links to to what I said was my main message, keeping the bigger picture in mind, is that your cumulative success rate increases. All right. In other words, after four to six cycles, about 65% of these women were pregnant. All right. So the more cycles you do, the higher your chances are eventually to be pregnant. Okay. And I think that is very important for women to remember is that they must not think that IVF is going to be successful in one cycle. You should almost go into IVF treatment knowing that you might need three cycles or four cycles. If you are then lucky, if you're one of the 29% that fall pregnant in the first cycle, that's great for you. But if you're not, you need to be prepared to stay in there for your second or your third cycle so that you can reap the benefit of that cumulative success rate. So I think yeah. that that sort of answers the, the first sort of basic question is that does your, your success rate increase in subsequent cycle? And the mathematical answer to that is no. All right. It doesn't. Yeah. Your per cycle success rate remains the same, maybe even slightly lower than your first cycle. All right. But the important thing is the concept of accumulative success rate. And I think that's a very important message. So yeah. the, the longer you stay in an IVF program, the higher your cumulative success rate becomes. And that will ultimately guarantee or at least make your, your chances of success better. Okay. And also, uh, I would think that, um, you know, with the first cycle, you can see what went wrong or what changes you need to make medication-wise, yes. everything. Yeah. And that helps, obviously. Yes. So, 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 so that brings me, you know, to, to another thing. So there are some things then that, um, that helps with subsequent cycles. Um, there are, we, we then have the opportunity of, 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 or, or, or the liberty of hindsight to see if we sort of made any mistakes or if we misjudged anything. So we can see the response to, to the stimulation and to the drugs, the dosages of the drugs. We are able to make uh, adjustments to that. Um, other things like timing of your trigger, type of trigger, uh, uh, supplementation of progesterone, etc. So those are all sort of stimulate, stimulation sort of protocol changes that, that, uh, that subsequent cycles then enables us to individualize and personalize an IVF cycle. So a lot of times we would sort of have a, a recipe that we start off with based on a woman's age or a ovarian reserve. But in subsequent cycles, we rely heavily on her previous cycle information um, to make critical decisions on follicle size, when to trigger, when to increase the stimulation, etc. So that's sort of from a stimulation point of view. Um, also, during a cycle, you, um, especially if you're a, a seasoned or a trained fertility specialist, um, you can pick up on certain cues. You know, does the endometrium thicken? What does the endometrium look like? Are there maybe subtle signs of endometriosis? You know, th small things like that. Uh, you know, what is their fluid collections, hydrosalpings, all the sort of things that might become evident during a, an IVF cycle. And then you've got the, the golden opportunity afterwards when you, in hindsight, look at all of this to see is there anything maybe structural that you can go and correct? Um, is there maybe an indication for a hysteroscopy or a laparoscopy, you know, to, to, to figure out uh, something, uh, you know, structural or to, to rectify something structural? And in that way, yes, there can be an imp improvement in your chances of success, you know, in, in a subsequent cycle. Okay. Um, an important question is, obviously, are the costs lower at a VITAS when, when doing a second or th round two or round three? Yes. Yeah. So we at, at the VITAS, we really sort of see 
um, we want to see the longer term picture for our patients and we want to encourage patients, especially with the, with the first or with a negative cycle, to come back. Um, and to that end, we have a generous discount for a second and a third cycle, right? So we offer up to 5,000 rand discount for a second cycle, um, as well as for our egg freezing cycles, also for women to accumulate more, more eggs during egg freezing. We offer 4,000 and then for a third egg freezing cycle, we offer a 7,000 rand discount uh, for egg wow. freezing. Um, so, so we really want to encourage our women um, and make it as easy as possible for them and accommodate them to try and bring them back for a second or a third time. Because we know if we look at the data with regards to cumulative pregnancy, that's where, where our success lies. Okay, that's, that's brilliant news, I think. Um, are there any tips for, or recommendations or tips for couples that's starting for with IVF journey soon? Look, I I, I think um, uh, you you need to find uh, the right clinic for you. That is that that is the right fit. Um, you need to be comfortable with your fertility specialist. You need to trust your fertility specialist, and um, he needs to be someone that listens to you also, and that knows what what your needs are, um, and that 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 is willing to engage with you and discuss things. I often find that my patients uh, are very informed. They're well informed. They listen to forums like like yours and other internet forums, and they come with very very nice, you know, good thought through questions. And I love engaging with them. So so you need to find a fertility specialist that's willing to engage with you um, and, 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 and be open and frank about the discussions surrounding your, your cycle. Um, I think that's the important thing. Obviously, uh, in preparation for, for a cycle, you must make sure that you're in good health. Um, I think that's very important. I think previously in, uh, um, on, on your show, I've talked about uh, weight and, and the importance of, uh, of, of, of weight and lifestyle, smoking, alcohol use, that type of thing. Um, so I think it's yeah. important that couples um, do the necessary preparation. Um, it's also important for me that couples don't delay pregnancy, delay seeking, uh, you know, fertility treatment. Um, yeah. You know, sort of when I read through a few things, you know, before tonight, the, the one thing that is always evident when you start to read anything about IVF success rates is that, unfortunately, the biggest predictor we have for success is maternal age or is the woman's age, right? So yeah. um, the earlier you, you, you go see professional help and by professional help, a registered fertility specialist at a fertility clinic, you know, the better. Um, uh, I, I find far too many patients that spend too long, you know, um, you know at the wrong place, um, yeah. you know, having substandard treatment. Uh, you know, with a condition that can easily either be rectified, you know, either with a proper ovulation induction or, or IVF treatment or with good surgery or, or something like that. And if you can, and if you can apply these small interventions, um, you might be able to solve the, um, the, the, the problem a lot earlier. Um, and Vitas is not, at Vitas, our, our point of, of, of departure is not, not IVF, all right? Our, we want to get a woman pregnant. And IVF, yeah. yes, that's one of the tools we have. But that is not, yeah. definitely not what everybody gets that comes to us. They get a good evaluation. Um, they get proper advice for, for natural conception because that will be the first prize, spontaneous natural conception. Otherwise, we go stepwise through ovulation induction, trying to rectify the problem, trying to correct yeah. male factor, surgery, the very big, 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 big uh, part of our practice. Um, you know, IVF, yes, that's the end of the line. And, and, and unfortunately, a lot of people need that. But uh, I would almost say the most of the patients, you know, that come to us, we are able to help, you know, in, in other ways. And I think okay. it's important to find someone, sorry, to find someone that, that is willing to go through those steps with you. I think yes. that's very important. Yeah, one thing I want to mention is Avitas is very well known for um, surgery and, and help when it comes to endometriosis. Um, if you can just mention that uh, quickly. Yeah, so endometriosis um, is, is a very common condition um, affecting women up to about uh, 10 to 15% of the general reproductive population. But if you look at the subgroup of women 
that presents with infertility, that that uh, percentage increases up to 50%. Um, so up to 50% of women that present with infertility has got endometriosis. And not all of them are asymptomatic. 10 to 15% of them have got no clue that they've got endometriosis. Um, yeah. But uh, but a lot of them have got endometriosis. Now, endometriosis is not always the, the 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 sole factor causing the infertility, but it might contribute significantly, um, and obviously through various ways, both anatomical distortion or immunological factors or endometrial receptivity. But um, uh, good proper endometriosis surgery for mild to moderate endometriosis has been proven, and we've got data in our own clinic that it improves our spontaneous conception rate up to 50%. Um, and that is very powerful, um, even if you compare yeah. it to, to, to statistics of IVF. Um, so it's very important to, to be able or to go to a clinic that can offer you that type of, of intervention. Okay, I've got one question from one of our audience members. Is Does transferring two embryos increase chances of falling pregnant? Yes, yeah. So, so it does. So, so um, a, a, a double embryo transfer does increase your per embryo or, or per transfer pregnancy rate. Um, but, however, that does come uh, with uh, unfortunately the risk then that it also increases your your um, uh, uh, pr uh, twin rate. Okay, so yeah. so yes, increases your pregnancy rate but also increases your twin pregnancy rate. Now, um, twin pregnancies uh, is very, uh, it's very cute and nice when things go well, but unfortunately from an obstetric point of view, that is a high risk patient. Um, um, and thus we will always counsel our patients thoroughly um, when we are considering a double embryo transfer. Um, SUSREC, yeah. our organization, have got guidelines on embryo transfers um, and there are other countries in the world where double embryo transfers are strictly prohibited. Um, the SUSREC guidelines is, is broadly, um, you know, will uh, um, or encourages a single embryo transfer below the age of 35. Um, and then because then because below 35 you've got a very high twin pregnancy rate um, and then above above 35 or after multiple transfers one can start considering a double embryo transfer um, but once again um, I think th th those decisions need to be individualized um, and the patients need to be well counseled and uh, the whole picture sort of needs to be taken into account um, yeah obviously twin pregnancies from an obstetric point of view um, increases your risk of uh, preterm labor um, with subsequent risk of admission to neonatal ICU and complications of prematurity um, which can be devastating you know for for newborns but not all pregnancies um, or twin pregnancies end like that but I those are the type yeah. of things that I would discuss with my patients before we make those decisions. But it's always a yeah. joint decision, um, you know, uh, and patients need to be well informed either way. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Dr. Hanukum, for joining us this evening. If you don't mind, please um, giving your details to the listeners of how they can contact you at Avitas. Yes, okay. So, yeah, you can. Um, I'm, I'm at Avitas. So, that is avitas.co.za. Um, we are situated in Vincent Bellotti Hospital in, in Cape Town. Um, our telephone number, let me quickly just, I don't know my number out of my head. <laughs> All right. So, our telephone number is 021. Um, five three one six triple nine in, in, in Cape Town and um, my PA is Rosalind and you can ask we also I do telephonic consultations or zoom consultations with people from out of town um, and like I said we offer the full range of fertility services uh, from like I said ovulation induction IVF uh, oocyte cryopreservation and then fertility surgery or endoscopic surgery for a whole range of gynecological conditions so yeah people are welcome to contact me or if they just need more information they're also welcome Okay, awesome. And Avitas is also on Instagram, Facebook, um, and you can also just always email me info at fertilitysolutions.co.za. Guys, if anyone wants to refer back to the conversation, because I see a lot of people actually came on afterwards, um, please, uh, you can go and view it on um, YouTube 
or on Instagram on the videos, um, as well as on Facebook. Thank you again, Dr. Anikum, for joining us this evening, and we hope to have you back again soon um, for a talk on um, endometriosis. So <laughs> I'm putting it that, out there now. But okay. <laughs> so thank you very much, Dr. That'll be a pleasure, and, and thanks again day. for the invitation and everybody that joined in to, to listen. Have a good evening. It's a pleasure. Have a good